I was talking. Yeah. Uh, we'll be getting. Oh no, we're into picks and bands already. Uh, bottom side. Uh, do we have rosters here? We don't oh, have the okay. rosters just yet, but you can see the players on the screens just yet, uh, just at the moment with it. We do know this wheels versus. Um, I know Incom's in this, I mm. believe, and he's up against. Who do, who's he against support wise? Oh, I don't know. I can't see. We the, should we the should players know these support. Right, well, it's I mean, there like can only there's only four, right? It's got to be somebody. Is yeah. it, it's, it's not Badger. It's not Badger. And is it Tricks? Tri no, Tricks just played with us, so it's who who's left? Inc Incon and. Hmm. Yonic. Yonic, yeah. Yonic, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has God, to be. we're so slow today. Like, yeah. It's been a long day. I mean, DM used all his brain power to try and feed and learn as hard as possible. Oh, it's, it's Yonic, dude. I told you. There we go. Yeah, you were right. Yonic. Lobster, Zalia, and. Wait, that, that's not Zalia. Who is that? No, it's Divios and Gars. Gars. and Gars. Oh, my God. That team is disgusting. And across the way, it's Reels, Incon, Boosh, Weaken, and Zay. Oh, God. These two teams are absolutely <laughs> revolting. Zalia versus Divios in the solo lane. That's going to be an exciting matchup. Two of the best. Well, we saw, we saw Captain Twig take on uh, Devios early today, and he was in a negative matchup and beat Devios. So maybe the, maybe the hype about it is not true. Zaylee's been talking about a big game about it, though. Oh, man, I, I don't know. I think both are looking really strong. But for me, I think Captain Twig is the breakout. Not only did he win the Joust and absolutely dominate the high-res versus pros, but, I mean, everything that I've seen from him in scrims is brilliant. And then we had me and Bart yesterday, the, the pick, the draft pick, and he was just unstoppable. <coughs> Captain Twig is like easily the most dangerous player here this well, weekend. Baka is the first god taken off the table. Quite a strong pick, big in the solo lane overall. And I'm guessing that's a respect one to Zalia over there. It's gotta be. Baka, both players are both extremely good with Baka, so. So just take that one off the table straight away, make yeah. sure it's not available. Sylvanas in response, not a surprise one there. Big in the big in the jaw lane, hard push power, very, very difficult to deal with. Almost everyone in second pick always bans Sylvanas. They don't want to give it up as first pick. You pretty much lose the lane and you lose the first rotation of mid harpy so. So talk to me about the picks and ban phase, because we've not really done that just yet in the, you know these tournaments, but this one's a semi-decent game. You know, it's a semi-important one as well, because the pros won't want to fail for their teams. But with first pick and second and second pick, the option, is it better to like leave some stuff up so you can get a good second pick? Pick, or is it best just to ban everything that you don't want to deal with for first? Right. Usually the general rule of thumb for picks and bans is that the p uh, the team that's banning first usually can do pick uh, target bans because they get the first pick. And usually the team with second have to ban the really OP gods that they mm -hmm. don't want to face. Sylvanas so almost 100% ban rate uh, from second pick spots. Well, Bologna was taken off the table as well. You can see by the blue team is back over to the red team now for their final one. Before we up to that first pick of what's available, Thor currently available, and it's going to be Sir Kepan, so Thor could go through here. Yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine so. I mean, he's, he's super strong, lots of damage early, not to mention the ult always is relevant. Tectonic Rift always relevant. There's really nothing he can do wrong. Well, will it, they actually go for that at the moment? Devios is on that team at the moment. I believe he's first pick, and that's why they're showing Devios in the bottom for this one. Would they first pick Hades, though? Come on. I don't think so. It's I mean, more they could third pick it. They could, yeah. In fairness, this is an all-star game, guys, but obviously don't forget the LAN tournament is this weekend as well, so people won't yeah. be showing off their best gods that they've got for the role. But what a team might want to show off a little bit of something special that they're not planning on running this LAN as a potential option. Right. The Athena pick is, uh, you know, generally everyone thinks it's a really strong pick, so they're, they're not giving anything away for tomorrow with that Athena pick. So Athena picked up once again, obviously with Savannah taken away, Athena one of the strongest ones. Geb's still on the table though, when you see quite a lot of Geb, at least over in North America, EU-wise, we generally go for the Ymir a little bit more competitive. Right, the Ymir is very aggressive and uh, he's really good for those mid-harpy fights. If you want to do those 100-0 to zero, uh, mid-gods coupled with Ymir, hard CC pretty much guarantees that he uh, that the mage hits their ultimate and all their skill shots. So that is Geb and Thor locked in as well. DM is back over once again to the other side to see what the game plan's going to be. Where would you look to take this? So well, looks like Thor and Geb were picked up, right? Thor extremely strong from the jungle. They can he can take one mid harpy ultimate and land on the other side of the mid harpy. So look out for that. So he has picked up. It's taken a very long time these two teams though, because normally most teams come in with a game plan, don't they? So you kind of get the first few picks rolling quite quickly because you know what you're going to be picking. But in this one, because they're unsure about where the enemy team's going to go, they're looking for safe options here. And Humbats, Poseidon, two of those safe options. Poseidon risen up in this meta at the moment. Exactly what you said. Humbats is probably the safest jungle pick at the moment. Doesn't really have a counter. You know, he's pretty safe overall. Great team fight ultimate. A lot of damage. Coupled with the Poseidon, they both have two hard CCs. Or, I mean, Humbats has a hard CC and Poseidon can land his Kraken from that. So, guys, don't forget, this is our uh, final event of the day. And with that, uh, the crowd rise. Make sure you're paying attention. This is the very last push that we're trying to make for this. We have $17,293 raised so far. Donations are still open. 
uh, make sure to go to crowdrise.com slash SPL Spring. Big shout out to everybody for donating this whole two days. It's what this was all about to begin with. Donations, raising money for charity, as well as giving you a bit more entertainment. High risk style as well. It's been a while since we've done something like this. It's been a lot of fun, honestly. I've had a great time, except for, you know, eating the peppers and uh, <laughs> the sardines were a little bit rough for me. But other than that, everything was great. Oh, and they were fine. Uh, I like those. Uh, Next time, I'll, I'll eat the sardines. You get the McDonald's. That's we're, a deal. We're clean on that, man. That's that's a deal. They literally just shake tons off screen there for you as well. Oh, well no, we want to make sure it's clean. All right, so ISIS gets banned away. Uh, we're going to be in the second picking phase. Option to All Star 2, uh, where Incontinentia, it looks like, is going for the pick. Yep, currently still thinking about it. They're really slow with the picks and balance this time. Kronos, oh. though, being picked up. Powers potentially solo lane, potentially mid lane. I'd like to see the solo, though. I think it's going to be mid lane because I, I'm pretty sure All Star 2 has the boosh. And I know he loves Kronos. Yeah, he he always talks about Kronos, yeah. That is Boosh as well on that team. So you might be right with that call out for that to be. It could potentially set something up, though, for Zaylia to maybe get baited into the fact that he might be thinking of go, going against this Kronos. We might see, like, something like Zaylia we've seen before, such as Nemesis or something. But I know you guys, like, over and over, like, what? How does this work? <laughs> well, yeah, we like to call Kronos a flex pick. He can go yep. mid or solo. So, you know, you never know. Hunter, too. I mean, super yeah. ambiguous. Yeah, he could be Hunter as well. But Rama picked up, he's not necessarily going to be there, though. But so Sobek bad. is picked up for that lane as well. Now, that could be solo lane Athena. That could be solo lane Sobek. It could be either or in this matchup. I would probably say it's solo Sobek. He does a little bit better than Athena does. Athena does have her ultimate for rotation, but Sobek's more dominant coming out with all that farm and level experience than Athena would be. And uh, I'm sorry, Zelia's on the bottom team, right? So I would assume that he's going to take the Sobek. We really haven't seen too much Athena. We've seen a lot of Sobek, but this could be a practice No, 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 uh, isn't that Devious' side? Mm. I think Bob's side is Devious. Is that the oh, it is. Yeah. I keep thinking so that Ionic is Zelia. Uh, oh, rip. This, or Gars, rather. Gars, Gars is Xavier. Gars and Zelia. They look alike from super far away. One looks, oh, there's the Nemesis. Okay, but, so oh, there's, there's the Nemesis that I was talking about as well. So we actually could probably see Devious' Sobek up against the Nemesis in lane, which is a bit of an interesting one because it's not one you get to commentate on very often, more often than not. I mean, Sobek, he's got decent sustain for the most part in the lane, but he's all about Gemini's burst, whereas Nemesis can block a lot of that burst with that shield. Right, I think that he's trying to set up the Thor to actually get some kills on the Sobek. If he was any other solo laner besides Nemesis, it would be a extremely hard for the Thor to get kills and ganks on the Sobek, so they want to keep him down early, stop him from getting tanky in those levels, so he, when he comes in mid-game, he doesn't harass the Hunters too much. Yeah, it's a really interesting game between these two right now, because I'm, I'm very excited to see how this Nemesis works, because there's been a lot of talk from some of the North Americans at the LAN, saying, please, run run Nemesis solo, watch what happens, and I'm like, okay, let my boy Zelia do his work, hopefully, you know, from the European standpoint, he does I, that. I personally don't get it, I mean, I've tried it a few times, it, it's super hard to do. It always feels like I'm out of position. You don't really have like counter, in, like counter initiate options. It's just you control the lane until you get big. And I don't think there are many players in the world that can make it work like Xelia does. Well, we'll see if he can actually make it work in this one. They're kind of loading into the game right now, as you can see across the bottom there. American Cancer Society charity stream. Go donate there. Crowdrise.com slash SPL Spring. Send all your donations there. We will try and read out as many messages as we can for the remainder of the stream as well going forward. So there's still a few few more little things probably planned up the sleeves for a few people to receive. No, oh, man. <laughs> you never know who it's going to be until the end. So with these two teams on paper then, and with what you've you seen this weekend, do you have a favor based off just those picks, Adam? Well, both team comps are a little bit different. The bottom team, Team 2, who picked the Humbots and Poseidon, they're more of a mid harpy team fight, whereas you have the other team with Nemesis, Solo, actually they have Rama, Geb, and Kronos, all kind of mid to late game gods, yeah, with the gap to protect him as if anyone goes in and tries to kill any of them. So you'd feel early mid is one side and then mid if, to late should go yeah, the other way? If team one uh, can get out of the early game without giving up too many kills to Poseidon Humbots, I think they can take it. To you, DM, do you think any different? For Something me, it's up? like you pick Geb, right, super strong, but Geb Nemesis, Nemesis isn't really looking to go in and try to like blow everything and is always at risk. I mean, she's one of the safest assassins in the game. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't really see the chemistry there comparatively to the Sobek Athena nonsense. Like they have two major frontliners and then a Kraken to set things up off nasty CC. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jeff Henlow talked about in detail about how you never want to see Poseidon Athena on the same team. It's just, that's a nightmare. Just could be the issue of it, yeah. And on that point, they actually have a lot of ways to blow beads, so they can guarantee the Humbats all, or the setup for the Kraken. That's a really good point. Yeah. I mean, on top of that, like you said, the Sobek Athena combo, looking in the wars with the Athena dunk coming in, if Devios can time it right, oh, he could yeah. actually explode and just insta-kill somebody if he's got the potential damage with the two of them to combine together. 
All right, so we should be getting in in just a few seconds, guys. Uh, thank you to everyone this weekend who has donated up until this point. Again, uh, we are at $17,293, 15% higher than our original goal. So thank you to everyone. Now, if we do manage to raise another almost 3K, we will show off the new map today. I heard the new arena map might be available for them, but here we go. We are into game finally, and the buffs are already beginning on both sides. Oh, ooh, early rotation coming out from top side. Very curious. Yeah, it looks like nothing, no invade coming out though. Overall, honestly, it was just like a, a pretty much standard. The push is on for a, a, obviously Athena and Anho because it's Rama Geb. You kind of expect that in the lanes up in Joe. Yeah, Honor Athena are very aggressive. Uh, Geb and Rama are more laid back, but they're really good at farming uh, the wave before it gets to the tower. So. Mm. I'm, I'm, I was pretty curious to see Thor rotate so quickly. I mean, I, leaving Zelia alone as Nemesis, I kind of thought that Humboss was going to go for an invade, but they don't. Instead, it looks like uh, Thor are very smartly going to go towards the bottom camps, and they do get a successful invade off there. Yeah, they do get invaded off now, but how long is it going to be able to hold for them? Yeah, the Thor realized he, they had a worse 2v2 in the solo lane, didn't want to get outpushed and get out rotated to mid, so oh, he left Jesus. immediately. Jesus! The burst in wow. mid was absolutely insane, and Bats goes down already for the red team. And now they're going to be able to get a bit of push power on the mid lane as well. Checking in with the left hand side as it stands here, still continuing to farm up. Rob and Geb pushing back a little bit better, though. Allied trying to fight forward here. Geb's shield going to be used and abused. Uh, Allied probably going to get pushed back here. One creep stands and uh, smartly. Oh, going for the cripple. Not going to find it. No, not going to find it for the time being. So, dash it in. A little bit of a taunt coming out. A little bit of poke into an impale once again. Allied and Ionic playing well together. They've probably played quite a bit in the solo queue together, Zavon. You've probably seen that before? Well, yeah, they both play ranked a ton. And uh, I've seen them together a lot. And they do really well. So the moment still tuning in with that duo lane over on the right side. Devios has pushed Zelia under the tower for the most part. They're not a surprise with that lane matchup. Nemesis, obviously not the best wave clear as well. And Sobat will punish her as much as possible in this lane to begin with. Yeah, Nemesis lane uh, is to be expected. Uh, we got a donation for $20 coming in from Zudi. Enjoying the stream. Hashtag F underscore cancer. Throw it in on your Twitters. That's a $20 donation. Thank you very much as we get back into the game. Well, as it stands at the moment, Weakum is looking for potential on the left-hand side. If Boucher rotated with him, with the ultimate available, he'll consider going in the left, but they've decided not to just yet. Two minutes 45, though. First mid halfies of the game are about to spawn, and it looks like we're going to see the blue All-Stars going to be heading for the right side. Left one's going to go to the red. Yeah, Red's, Red's going to be pretty clean here. There's no uh, contest whatsoever. As you see Thor uh, and Geb, and, you know, actually, Geb is my favorite support for three-minute mid-harpies. I mean, Shockwave is just almost guaranteed. You hit it really close up, it's going to be level two. He's looking for the... Oh, he's going to go in. He's going to go in, but he doesn't manage to hit onto Devos. The Cataclysm goes down, but the Kraken in response was used to Gars. Picks up the kill onto Weaken, and now Inka's going to run away. He's not got much available for him here. He's going to get engaged by four members. I don't see them. There's no way he's getting out of this one. That's going to be a free two kills. I mean, I, I don't know what went through his head there. He's like, hey, I Ooh. should dive into Poseidon. Ooh. Reels just went 1v1 against Allied and won that straight up. We missed that action because of the mid harpies, but Reels straight up with that Rama against Anher. Right. We, we even talked about it in Pigs and Bands that uh, Poseidon and Humbots were better at mid harpies. That's right. Thor took a risk, missed his dunk. He got immediately turned around and 100 to 0. Yeah, on top of that, Incon also used his ultimate as well with the Cataclysm to try and follow up with that, but because the original dunk missed, it just allowed them to turn that fight around completely. And, and that's that's what should be happening, though, right? On paper, Thor diving into three people, even with Geb behind him, should not be able to get out of that if a Kraken lands. Oh, sure. And smartly, they take advantage of it cleanly. Uh, over in the duo, just like you said, Reels outplaying Allied front to back, getting a quick kill as well. And that's one of the most important kills in the game, if not the most important kill, because when a hunter gets that far ahead of another hunter and it's just a 1v1, it's very hard to come back from that. Well, this sort of level of play is where you normally expect that your lane should go even unless another lane that influences it. Sure. Like 2v2 is a different situation, but straight up 1v1, you should be okay, you know? Yeah, it's very rare to see 1v1 in the Hunter lane, and honestly, on her does have the advantage over Rama, so kudos to Reels. Well, as, as, as you do, though, I mean, to be fair, you're one of the most aggressive hunters known in the world. And, yeah. like, you will 1v1 trade and try and push people out for the most part. Um, so, you know, in that, that experience, it's not something that you normally see, you know, outside of you playing most of the time. You yeah, know, straight true, 1v1s. True. But I guess because it's kind of like TV, it's sort of an all-star show match here, DM, they're just kind of going ham to an extent. They're just going more a bit crazy, a bit more aggressive than they might do in the real game. Well, uh, we're going to reach past the four-minute mark. The buffs are going to be respawning. You see Red making sure they're going to get their top side very, very quickly. Uh, a little bit slower on the bottom side. You see the rotation's finally coming through here. And uh, we're going to ride him with Thor. Is he looking for a gang opportunity here? 
I don't know. He's kind of looking around the mid lane, looking for somebody to come in. But I mean, the moment for Lobs is in base at so the moment. Ward, and right back, there. But Bats is kind of safe for the time being. He's going to notice this one out and just play it safe. The three man group, though, from them, and they didn't manage to find anything at all. I really think Thor should be just taking buffs on timer. He really needs to just let the Kronos get to his mid game, get his uh, first two items, and uh, then work from there. Yeah, so we can we can in that jungle there. He's actually going to be rotating up for that red buff now. Look a bit, bit of a big rotation coming as they come over here. Incon heading back to lane at the same time. You can see in the jungle there, we're just going to see Ally back into base on this left hand side too. As we check out the solo lane once again, this matchup between Zelia and Devios, highly anticipated, but at the moment it's just a farm off because of the way these two gods play. I don't think anyone wouldn't have expected that at this point. I mean, what it, when it comes down to it, it's really impossible to kill Sobek. And even, you know, with that amazing ultimate, Divine Judgment going to be taking away protection, slowing, taking health away. Even on a gank, it's going to be very hard to kill someone who has slow immunity in his ult. He has a dash. He has two forms of great CC, a heal. I mean, it's it's very hard. Well, left hand side, we do see red team actually pick up those left harpies. Right ones are going to go to blue team. With a, a bit of a, of a delayed spawn as well, but Real did a good job of clearing out this way first of all. So we can actually rotate and cover for that. And now we can actually just back in at the golf here. There, I thought he might be considering going up. He actually is, but he's still at a ward at the moment. That's going on, but mid lane, bit of action going down at the moment as they go backwards and forwards, but no kill just yet. Thor is going up, he's looking for the dunk down, gonna connect with allies on this side as well. With the damage as well, the spins coming out. Athena ult was fantastic position. Ra up with the snipes though. Can he find this third one? No, Ooh. misses two. Does reels that's unusual. Reels does not miss that many. And you know, it's funny the first time I, I watched reels and really took note of what he was uh, doing at a competitive level, it was on ROM, it was at the TSM Invitational, and he wasn't on land. I thought it was a LAN event. It was actually an online event. They were just all together. Oh, yeah. And he hit every single snipe. And we kept talking about, wow, this god looks really easy on LAN, right? And then, I mean, he just hits everything. So like Hindu Man said, it's so impossible to see him miss all of the shots. I don't think we've ever seen that before. No, At least he, not from him. He hit the first one, but the last two he didn't. But overall, that's not something that we generally see. I guess, though, it's his first game of the day as well. He's not been involved in the other tournaments. So his first one, World Cup, turned up, played so you, do need, you do need to warm up a little bit for those ROM snipes. Yeah, you need to warm up for those ROM snipes as time goes on. And make sure you actually can land them. I guess I guess overall, how, how long does it normally take you to warm up with the ROM snipes up? I go to jungle practice for about five minutes and uh, ulti the robot a few times. Usually that boosts my confidence a lot because uh, robot is bad at juking. Yeah. <laughs> He's bad at juking yeah. as well. So, as we can see at the moment, the Golf Fury is available at the moment. No team's actually started this yet. Boosh is hanging around here, though, with Incon in tow. And with both these sides, I mean, to be honest, it's the side I feel with Reels and Reels and Zelia on. There is technically a disadvantage because those guys won't play with each other as much as most of the other guys as well. All right, so eight minutes in, buffs are about to start respawning. Uh, both teams looking pretty even at this stage. Despite there being a one kill advantage, the gold is pretty much even. You know, if you bring the charts up, experience difference is slightly, strangely ahead uh, for the blue team. It's only a small experience lead, though. It's not like a monstrous lead at this stage. Gold, but 800. Much... I mean, with a with a kill down, that's impressive. Well, yeah, it kind of balances out between the two, honestly. I mean, 800 without the kill, but you are correct with that. This is extremely good for the red team because all they got to do is sit back. They're going to outscale the blue team late game, 100%. So this is a really good spot for them to be in. Well, at the moment, we're just going to continue seeing Poseidon Lobster in this mid lane. Lobster, one of the EU pros up in this mid lane, voted for by the fans to actually be in this one, just along with everybody else in this as well. Oh, I, was, I thought we were going to see a split here. Gar is not going to take part of the red. Maybe looking for the invade, checking oh. gold. No, still going to split it on the bottom side. Lobster uh, going to team up in the mid lane here with Ionic, and this will be a 2v2. Incon's there as well, but they're going to rotate out gold. We still have a little bit before the left side mid camps are up. Uh, could be trying to three-man the purple buff, and you see Gar is waiting in the wings here. He's going to get spotted out. I really like Reels' ward there, uh, right there between the gold fury and the middle of the lane. Most uh, hunters counter ward their own purple. So, no counter ward there, and he has a ward there to see the incoming gank. Well, incoming Ionic are trading enough at the moment around the bay. Ooh. Mid lane, there's a bit of engagement as the, the rotation has happened. The Kraken comes out in mid. Zaley's going to disengage, getting hit by that Fennel Evil as he does, but he's out of trouble. Meanwhile, though, the rest of his team are not, and Weakens going to go down there to Devios, who comes in for the cleanup. A one for zero trade there in favor of blue. Uh, and they're trying to rush this down. Um, actually, Ionic also picking up the vision advantage. In Incon and he uh, both tried to fight through those sentry wards. A brilliant play by, uh, we I'm sorry, Ionic 
He actually taunts the Gold Fury to get the reach to hit the, uh, the first hit and then walks up to get the rest, just barely edging out Incon, who's actually going to find himself in trouble. The rollout's going to get him out of danger. Rama coming from the backside. Reel's going to go right to the sky. Uh, Ally going to jump through the first shot. In trouble. Takes the second. Takes the third. That's the Reels we know. Yeah, as you can see, in the position Ally on the backside, they're looking for the Impaled. Not going to find it for the time being, though. Azalea does come in for the cleanup to pick up one. He's pushing away home bats as well. He's under threat at the same time in this wow. engagement. And it looks like Kronos was sorry, Poseidon's going to go down there as well. Two Boosh on that Kronos. Yeah, Boosh actually going to get sent back there. Ionic is uh, trying to fight for this. It looks like both Ionic, uh, yeah, wow, Ionic, and we're going to see Humbots go back as well. So is this going to be an attempt here? Is he going to try to go in for this? I mean, Ionic has to get out of here. We'll have to see. He's trying to go Divios. in for it, but he's not going to be able to get his way out. Oh, okay, Ionic's going to go down. Divios almost was able to at least try to reset it. He's in a lot of trouble, though. Waiting three seconds before. Yeah, no, there's no way he was going to get that charge play off cooldown. Clean kill. Red team with the first real lead of the game. Yeah, real lead of the game. I don't think they should have went for the steal there. Uh, red team, they have so much CC to stop any kind of steal attempt. Well, Zalia is still alive in the mid lane using that shield, and Weakens could have pick up Degas after he did come in with that fear. No evil wasn't good enough to pick up the kill there. And now you can see the experience and gold lead 3,000 experience, 3,000 gold in the lead for the red team after those engagements. You know, it's funny, before, before the game started, I'm like, I'm not really sure why they're going to pick Geb uh, and Nemesis, right? I mean, Nemesis has her own shield, but they used both quite cleanly there. Uh, Zalia getting out of danger and picking up another kill onto Gars, extend their lead even further. Things looking pretty grim for Blue. Yeah, but pretty grim indeed. I mean, checking with the itemization built here. We can see the best of Valor being picked up by Devios on that solo lane. Sobek, not to be surprised, obviously, is a very good item. It's good defense, especially when there's not as much penetration in the game as well. You've seen it a bit more common nowadays, up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, what I like to point out, though, is the Nemesis rotated uh, and when she had her Ishaval, and that is the one item she needs to actually start doing yeah. damage to actually take out the squishies in the back line. You saw her do that there at the Gold Fury fight. So she waited patiently for the itemization before the rotation. Exactly. Happened, which is a smart thing to do. Good. We've got Fury down, though. We're about 12 minutes in, and it'll just go back to a farm off. Weakened on the left hand side. He's looking for an opportunity onto Allied if they can find it. Allied, very wary of this, already backing away to the tower for the safety option at the moment as Devos continues to push in on the right up against Zalian. It's a four man grouping now by the red yeah. team on the left but there's nothing to hide behind. I would really like to see if we can focus on the right side of the map. Right now, there's no objective. The Gold Fury is down. All the buffs are coming up on the right. You see speed coming up soon, and uh, he even has kill potential on Sobek with Nemesis Alt. Well, talking about that, we can is now rotating over to that sort of direction as well. Ready for that speed buff available as well. As, as the flip charge break does connect from Devios, just moving Zelia away again. They're trading backwards and forwards a little bit here as the shield comes out from Zelia. Devios wisely doesn't trade with him now, but in comes reinforcements and Lobster and Degas. But disengage ends. Well, I mean, they'll still be able to. I mean, they push him back, right? Now the speed buffs up. He'll be able to split this one cleanly with Lobster, so it's not like they lost much. Left side, uh, there's an invade towards the jungle, but there's nothing here for them to gain. Well, actually, wait, wait, the red just came up. Red has just come up. They were looking for the purple at the moment because that purple has already been done. The purple is actually down was dropped just before. Degas might find him with these mid left harpies here. Rios needs to watch himself oh, now because if Divios no. just teleported him around the back, Rios could get picked. Divios didn't see the rotation. No. Uh, he's going to get the pull though, but I don't think there's any follow up potential here. He goes for the body block, slowing him down. Uh, Reels has the roll coming up. Yeah, he didn't panic at all. He didn't panic at all. He knew he had the incon there, but that's a fear of evil, though. They're going to go under the tower. There is the Astral Barrage coming out to defend himself under this tower. Look at the boys now on cooldown from Devios as well. And then a great knock up coming out as well. Divio's taking some damage from the tower. Cataclysm's going to be huge, but Incon still uh, going to be forced back. Allied finding a double. Uh, the stop time not going to find its target, and Boosh going to force them back all the while on the right side. Uh, Weaken and Zalia picking up some buffs here. Um, really not that great of a trade for them. They're going to lose two for what seems to well, be a little bit of jungle they buffs. They took a tower as well. They took oh, the yeah. tower oh, there. They're gonna they keep also going. got the blue buff, and they're looking for the tier two on they're this right-hand side. They're not going to lose much out of this. I mean, this situation is not too bad. Yeah, Reels got caught out there. The rest of his team should have realized that two people were on the solo lane side, taking a tower, taking all the buffs over there, and they should have just backed off, minimized their losses, let Reels die, and the rest should survive. Well, should have survived. I'm pretty surprised that they didn't sack for that. Right. One, they could have definitely got Thor out of there either way. Zalia probably could have picked that up, if not only to make sure that Divios has to protect the Phoenix at that stage. That, that really could have hurt them, but they're going to play it safe. They want to make sure that they're going to maybe not drag the oh, game out. Be safe. Beautiful combo by Allied, but uh, Boosh Beautiful use of beads right really there. Really good shield coming out from Incon as well. In response, we can dunk in, gets the double tap off into Allied. No, he doesn't. The single was only he had, but the enhance were good enough to bring down Allied after a good disengage from boost and support from Incon. I really love the way that Allied played that. You know, he actually put himself in a great spot, but the issue is Incon, you know, I mean, he knows Allied front to back. He actually covers every option, knows that the disperse is down, walks into point blank range, and guarantees the kill with the shockwave. And then a little bit of spin action coming out. 
Weakening picks up the kill cleanly. We can pick up the kill cleanly. Left hand side, Ionic is under the top. So China's top reels from pushing down this tier two from the tower on the left hand side. Incarnate in the jungle though was there with a shield if it was required over the wall. Meanwhile, everybody else is back and this red buff still standing at the moment. The one thing I noticed there is that once Ally died, Rama was still farming the whole time, getting a lot of tower damage, getting a lot of extra waves, and it's even a small lead, especially oh. on a late game hunter like Reels. We could see a bit of engagement as the Fennel Evil goes off. We Beautiful. can see the guards bring down Reels. Incon has a cataclysm defensively used. The Kraken hits with two and Lobster brings down Incon as well, but Boosh is here. Well, Garz and Ionic still alive. Lobster, however, is not. We can find another fantastic kill. Lurking in the water, Stivios will find another Boosh with his ultimate on cooldown. Gonna try to find something. Stop time. Not gonna find it in the... B oh, but oh, he kills I Garz? I lied, actually, with this Fury. Brings down Boosh as well. Zelia, very late to that rotation, does not have teleport online. Right now, Divios is definitely Ooh. keeping him in the game. He's making such great use of his teleport. You don't see that all the time. A lot of people get teleport. They don't level it up right away. They don't make good use of it. It becomes a wasted active slot. Yeah. Well, I mean, th minutes. this is exactly what you're going to see from a top player with teleport. Using it, not maybe not on cooldown, but every time there's a potential invasion, just get oh. over there. Zelia versus Ally is going on, and Divios can't really do too much to stop this as the dash comes in. He dashes himself to stop the charge play from him. Zelia wants the blood of Ally, but he's not going to receive it as Ionic is here too to try and stop Zelia, bringing him down. Tell comes that good blink shield coming out from Incon, followed by the shockwave. Reels is up. Reels gonna look for Allied. Yeah, one shot, two shot. No, third's not gonna hit, just barely getting out of that one. Allied won't even attempt the red this time, going right back to the base. Uh, team might be in some trouble here, considering Gold Fury is alive. And uh, there's a big grouping here from Red and now Blue as well, as the rest of the team is healed up and is ready to fight. Torn onto Reels again. The charge prey gonna get stopped by the beads from Reels as well, just because so we can actually get pushed into that fight. But Zeni did a good job, considering he was late on the rotation because of the teleport. Yeah. He defended the Gold Fury. Yeah, that's, he did his job. He defended the Gold Fury. Getting the kill also would have been nice. And uh, what I want to point out here is that Sobek got Reels' beads. So look for Gars, yeah. look for Boosh to go straight onto. Uh, uh, Rom next play. Straight onto Reels. I mean, and that's beats too as well. That's a two-minute cooldown. That's going to make sure that they have ample opportunity to rush this down. I mean, realistically, the blue should be looking for Gold Fury at this point to force Reels into the fight. Once Reels is there, I think they should just immediately disengage, try to pick the Hunter, and see if Ally can get, just get to the back line and try to find the kill on the weekend. But then, as Red Team, you, to be honest, right now, as Red Team stands, they're already still up in gold and experience anyway from the early game. It's true. They lost that one engagement in the left-hand lane, but traded out with the tier one anyway. That bad fight over and left, it hurt them, but it's not lost on the golf here because Azalea, so now they're able to sit back a little bit and just wait, wait out for the beads to be available again if they so want to. Mid Harp is being contested on the right, though. We may see a fight here. Divios is completely stuck in this lane, too. Oh. If he rotates again, he's going to lose the tower. Fair no evil Kraken was used there, the taunt as well, as you can see. Chasing over the wall was Degas there, but he's running to oh weaken and the boost is going to bring down that home pass, but Allied's rotation will secure the kill for Lobster onto weaken as well, as Divios is going to attack up the front line with Allied in tow. The looking for more, but it's a 4v3. Uh, Divio's going to find the charge prey, but it's going to be beast out. Allied in a lot of trouble there. Auto attacks. The jump wasn't quite off cooldown. Yeah, he's going to be looking, looking for, for the snipes. He's going to find them all. He will. Reels is found. He's marked. And Incon, usual Incon, kid stealing away kills there once again, forcing Ionic away. This could be a fire giant here. I mean, this is the reels that we expected. He missed a few shots in the beginning. No big deal. Still 1v1's Allied hitting every snipe now, making sure that his team is just completely safe. Ooh. Oh, Incom blinking. They're turning all to Lobster. It was such a big re-engage. Well, he does get a good taunt off, but they don't really care. Boosh is sacking this time. He doesn't care at all. Zelia around the backside was available for support. They'll bring the tier one down, and now they can go straight for gold too. That yeah. was an amazing fight for uh, the red team. You, it's, I think it's safe to say that reels is warmed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More than likely, as you can see by score on the 2-2-7 two, two, and seven at the moment. He's got Iqbal online. Along the way, though, Allied looks like a little bit ahead in build in terms of, like, itemization-wise. I mean, you can see Beads 2, Sprint 2 in comparison there, but I just don't think Reels has gone back to base yet. He hasn't gone back, no way. Yeah, 1,700 gold sat there in his inventory right now. I mean, farming up that wave, he'll probably go back after this one. Well, let's bring up the charts here, take a look at the story. As you see, the decline declines deeper. 6,400 gold, 7,300 experience now separate the two teams uh, just at the 20 minute or a little under the 20 minute mark at this point uh, there's a lot of trouble for blue here now normally this comp if it was even gold or they were ahead this would be domination but you have two guardians on a team that's behind this mm. much you have a hun bots who's a level behind thor i mean you have a, a poseidon who can't get his krakens off safely and then you have late game oh, on her versus Rama. I mean, that's... Zaley's in the world of her. He's going to get hit by a taunt. He's popping the shield as well. Going to turn his attention and his ultimate onto Degas to force a disengage from Degas, which gives him the opening to get out. Devios with the flip onto Incon, though, but there's going to be no follow-up there. 
That's very surprising. Uh, and what's surprising to me on that is that uh, Divios is the one that sent that back. Ionic and Degars, I mean, th that's all TSM. I mean, there should have been chemistry, and oh. they kind of were on different pages. The there. switch around those Thoris now up in the air. We can lock it for the dog to Divios. It's a 3v2. Ionic with the ultimate in response as well. Looking the words has been used there, looking for the burst damage, but a good cataclysm coming out from In Concerns. This fight, Boosh is on his way. Oh, Ionic's taking a lot of damage here. Yeah, Zelia's gonna find it. Boosh is gonna find another, and that's gonna be all she wrote for the Guardians. Uh, Gars, Lob, and Allied on three extremely squishy characters are going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Right tier two is going down. Yeah, it will go down. Lobster might be able to defend a little bit, but he's just going to be careful against all three of these gods as well. Boosh actually going to go back door and even wait for the minions there. But you said this at the start of games, that man, I mean, about picks and bans. As this game goes on, mid to late game, you're favoring the red team because of their composition. Right. The fact that the red team came out of the early game and the mid game with the lead, it's going to be really hard for the blue team to even make a dent on the red team now. I mean, I mean, it's not off me like saying this, but I mean, as like blue team here, you've got two guardians on the side. You're just looking for one good fight because you've got the initiation of the all in comp, you know. Yeah, the problem with the two guardians though that are behind is that there's a nemesis on the other team. Yeah, and she's just gonna shred them, and no matter who initiates, they're gonna just get blown up. Yeah, well, we're gonna have to see if they can find some way back into this one right now. Is the moment? There's a big rotation round for wow. Allied on this left hand wow. side. The does connect for a lot of damage. Rom is in the sky looking for those snipes. Will he Ooh. find him again? Oh, we will. Wow. So the, the big thing there that my, you might not have seen is that Allied threw an auto attack off. That auto attack slowed him so much. And the reason that he did that is because he does not use instant casts. He was looking to just hit his three and then click to jump into the air. The problem was is that that fight was initiated by a cripple. Rama made sure that he couldn't take to the sky. Uh, Incon now going to be forced to rotate over, uh, try to help down reels. You see uh, both Ihanic and Divios trying to just find an answer, right? Try to just get something back from Allied going down again, but they can't. I mean, it's just reels being too safe and too accurate on everything that he's thrown in the late game. It's a very open map right now with the tier two tower being down the right hand side of the dwelling, the solo lane. The solo is not going to be there that often. That's why Zelia came all the way over to left because it was like, well, I've got a to farm down here. I can't overextend to tier two at the moment, so I'll just rotate to the left hand side. And even though you got teleport, Devious can be there in time. Oh, we can. Uh, not going to get the double tap. A rather strange wall. Thought that one was going to stun a little bit off the mark. Uh, doesn't find it, but they still, it looks like, are trying to camp this purple buff. Divios is like, I'm going to get this, and oh, I will fight you. Divios just went in and got hit by the Ulmer once again. Coming out from Zelia, looking at what was used. Divios Whoa. very low. Weakens going to find that kill on the backside. And now with that Kraken as well, already on cooldown. Allies trying to turn that team around. Desert Fury is off, but now he's in trouble. Uh, Ally trying to find a way over. He's not going to find it. Yeah, Cripple again. That was a three-for-one trade in favor of Red. Uh, Weaken with a damn good bait there. Divios really overestimating his position. I think he thought that he was a little bit tankier than he was, and Xavier's like, well, about that. Well, we're currently watching as the whole team of Red Siege down the left-hand side here as well. Fire Giant still standing. Go Fury's up in about a minute's time here, but Red Team could be looking for a Phoenix already. They yeah. could push for this. Yeah, I mean, you saw it there. Divios engaged. He has Ethereal Staff completed and Breastplate of Valor. Should be super tanky. Nemesis ults him right away. Thor double taps him, spins, dead. I think that's the issue coming up against the Nemesis, though, in fairness. You build tanky for defense, he's just going to steal those protections against Hindu, tanky himself. It's 45% stolen. I mean, and Hindu yeah. has a lot. I mean, he, he has a lot of defense. He has a lot of health. And Zalia just takes it away, and they blow him up. And there's there's not really a reason that Thor could do that much damage otherwise, right? But yep. once those protections were gone, we can immediately on it. It's like these two have been playing for years. Well, it's 50% of current HP as well, which means it's your half health. If you are full health, you are now half health with that ultimate, right. followed up by your protection shred too. Right, and that's why you really want to stack health as as a, a tank because you get you get rid of all your protections. But if you get half of let's say 4,000 health, it's still 2,000 health, and that's, that's still true. pretty good. Yeah. That's yeah. true. So you're still in an okay spot there. So you're not losing much in terms of protections then because you've not built any right. as much. What I really want to see Blue Team to do is bait out that Nemesis Alt and have her escape. I don't want Divios to dash in, get Nemesis Alt, mm -hmm. and then have no way out because he'll die. What he needs to do is just go in, get them ulti, and then dash out. So it's a bait situation. Exactly. If you're looking to try and bait out the ult, then re-engage after it once again. Exactly. So the split right there was absolutely gorgeous. Now they know Allied's clearing the wave, so they're going to take the goal fury. They send Zelia over to right side, wards up, make sure no one's doing the fire giant, and with that, they're going to get another clean 1,500 gold. That's going to put them at 12k, Hindu man. Yeah. I don't understand. It's a big situation from now. Reels has got crit going online. Allied across the way still. Not finished off his executioner just yet. So in 
terms of Hunter is right now, Reels is absolutely monstrous and on the table. They're looking to try and siege down this mid lane here. They could look for Aeonic with the taunt, looking for a bit of poke pressure, but a shield from Incon. Backside, Devios has teleported into this, eats a wall straight Holy. away. And half his health, he's already gone. Devios is dead again to the boost. That's a Sobek. You can't do that to Sobek. There was not even a Nemesis ult there. There was no Nemesis ult at all. That was just Jeez. magical damage. Yeah, that was, that was impressive. And now with, with, the, with him going down one of their front lines down, they've only got Ionic here for the engage with the Gars and the Fear No Evil, but in contacted. I mean, I love the build coming out from Boosh. I think this is one of the reasons they're blowing it. Watch the damage this guy's able to do if he gets to the back line. He's got the Polynomicon ready. Lobster trying to throw it down, but not getting it in time. Zalia will take some damage, but Reels from the sky. Allied up in the air, coming down hard. Reels finds a double. They're going deep. Ionic dashes away. Reels finally is deterred, but the poor Phoenix is the next target. This could be game. It could be game indeed, but will they actually look to end here? Will they look oh, for the Phoenix yeah. in the right? Weekend's actually going up to the sky here, going to look to dive in potentially on this with his ultimate. They're just going to dive. He's got minions coming down as well. They're just waiting patiently. There comes Weekend. This could be the game. Ionic is alive with Divio, so can they turn it? Zalia getting pretty low here. Dashes away. They'll reset the Titan. Divio's getting very low and will spend another 50 seconds in the base. Zalia 4-0 and 12 on this right now. Divio's bought a purple pot, went out, Forgot to it. use it, oh, died, yeah. and now still has the purple pot. Okay, at least you didn't, you, you know, I was gonna say, yeah, it's okay to use it in that dif dire situation. You want as much damage as you can get, right? Exactly. He, it was an all or nothing situation. He needed to save the Titan. However, he didn't use it, so, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it worked out well. Challenger yeah. level plays. Challenger level Challenger plays. Challenger right level there. plays from Devios, and that's what we're gonna see in this one. 26 to 11 now for the Red All Stars team. You guys voted for these to play in this match, and so far, it looks like the right hand side, the one with more Europeans on, I might add, oh, is the yeah. one that's winning. E e is destroying NA this weekend. It's been disgusting. But you know, Zap, I'm going to tell you, every time I see your stream says Challenger Lover plays, I, I'm like, I have to watch this. Like, <laughs> I have to click this. <laughs> just, what is he going to do next? I love it. So I had 27 minutes in now with this Phoenix down in the middle lane. They could start looking for the Fire Giant here. They've won every pretty much engagement. Hey, Hindu, I think those high res guys did better, right? Then, oh my god. The high res fought those pros, and then the pros fought the pros. Yeah. I, I think the high res guys did better than this blue team. Who's his ally? Uh, well, to be honest, to be honest, no, because you are on our team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do I see? Do you see anyone here with 25 deaths? I don't see anyone no, here with 25 I, deaths. I, yeah, you see how they have two guardians. Both of them would have been in my lane. I mean, to be honest, if we compare it to my support, there's only 11 wards placed by Incon. I placed 30. I'm <laughs> yeah, just they saying. didn't mean anything because you wards. didn't rotate. Well, Dirty wards. Well, at the same time, you push up the left hand lane as well, and you just no, don't yeah, even have a ward that, there. That like, was just me dying a tree. Yeah, uh, uh, Twiggy, man. Yeah, Twiggy, yeah, good, good loves excuse. Good me. excuse. Uh, I was not excuse. He just died. So Fire Giant could be sieged up here, weakening his zone. Actually, going aggressive on Devios here. One. V1 and putting the damage to him. Devos level 17, a situation we don't usually see out of the solo lane Devos. Yeah, the red team right now, they have the vision control and they're just trying to get oh, picks. Oh, 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 oh my god. Absolutely destroyed there by Reels as well, chasing him with that sprint. Dunk down from onto Lobster, though, followed by the wall <laughs> the beads was used to disengage. That wall. You, you always hate to see those kinds of things happen. Like, they're going to go in and and we can block this whole team off. All right. Damn it. That's, that's enough. Well, with that death onto Allied now, they could actually look for the Fire Giant once again. But you were saying they're just trying to find picks all the time. Right. When you're ahead like this, what you want to do is establish vision control. Have the blue team, you know, frantically saying, oh, are they doing Fire Giant? Are they doing Fire Giant? Someone peeks, they get picked. Well, wow. peeks and get picked. Two Diego's hand threes. He's actually being picked here again. He's having to rush away with the charge prey, but the team is going to be after him. Zelia might be looking for this one too. Meanwhile, in the jungle, the late backs might get caught out as well. I'm just looking at Divios, man. There, there's no way he's getting out of this one. Stop time should even do enough damage. Wow. Zalia cleaning it up with a slice and dice. Mid Phoenix still down for over a minute. This is really going to hurt. It is going to hurt indeed. You can see them dropping the tower down. Reels is pushing in mid wave to make sure those fire minions are on their way as well. But now with Reels here on this right hand side, they can look to just tank this one up for the most part. Incon's going to go in. No. No. <laughs> he's like, look how scary I am. I don't even use abilities. <laughs> I, I just walk at you. Hear me raw. But there's Degazi's Fear No Evil coming out to try and block Boosh. But Boosh with the beads and the snipes coming out from Reels. Hit all three are onto Degazi. They're going to drop him down. The Kraken doesn't do enough. And now Lobster's going to go down to weaken two. See, I mean, if, if there was any proof, right? I mean, Reels could just be like, yeah, it's usually just EU service. Like, this is how I normally play, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's just banter. But to be honest, at LAN, most of the pro most of the hunters are always like, God, I love LAN. Because uh, the wait, ping is, is this a, a replay difference. from last game? When I sat in the fountain and they just threw things at me for 20 minutes? No. Oh, he no, tossed it a bit, no, because Reels. you died. Because you died. No, I didn't die. Oh, you did. I stayed alive. Oh, yeah. I mean, I definitely died. Lord in heaven, did I die. It just took a few times, but the time is slowly dropping here. 77%. Incon is the only one still standing here. Looking for that player damage for those fantasy points. I know coming into this one, he was trying to say that he's behind on kills to Trix Tank, and he needs to farm up this weekend well, to catch him. With how much trolling is going on from the red team, I think that everyone on blue has earned a spot at Hyrule Studios.